Hi guys, it's your island girl and I'm back with another reaction video for you today. And today we're heading to Sweden. So this one is what not to do in Sweden. Avoid these 10 mistakes. And I'm getting this one from Three Star Vagabond. Don't forget to go over and show him some love. The link will be in the description below, guys. Tell him island girl sent you, all right? So I want to see these things that you're not supposed to do in Sweden. Sweden is a beautiful place from what I've seen so far. Love what I've seen and heard so far. Can't wait to visit. So if you're new to my channel and it's your first time here, come on in. Wrap back, put a smile on your face and enjoy. To all my regular schmegglers, day one, to the pies, to the poofs. Come on in, wrap back, put a smile on your face and enjoy this reaction with your island girl. All right. So without further ado let's get into this video because i want to hear the things not to do when visit sweden all right here. swedish people are polite and friendly and they don't like to make a big fuss they often smile but they might still be furious on the inside this is a list of 10 things that you shouldn't do in sweden okay here we go So you want to visit the cold north and explore the lovely country of Sweden, yes. but you don't want to make a fool of yourself. No. I'm here to help you with that. Okay. With this simple guide, you can avoid the worst pitfalls when you travel to Sweden. Let's kick things off with buying a round of drinks. Oh. Things not to do in Sweden. So you're at a bar with some random Swedish people you've met and you notice that your glass is empty. You want to be a good chap, so you surprise your new friends by bringing back a pint of beer for everyone at the table. Imagine your surprise when you're not met with cheers and thanks. Instead, you're met with suspicious looks. Buying rounds isn't all that common in Sweden. Everyone typically buys their own drinks. If you buy a round, every Swede starts to do a mental calculation. Hmm, we're five people at the table. That means I'm gonna have to drink five more drinks, and I was planning on going home soon. A Swede will feel obligated to pay you back for the drink you bought him. You just wanted to be nice, but instead you accidentally caused him anxiety. Okay, so don't buy a own a drink. That's what you're telling me. I don't want to, anyone to get flustered. I've never, I've, I, I get his reasoning. So I, it makes sense based on his reasoning. And it's not your, it's another cultural thing. It's not something that you normally do. So I get it. That's number 10. Interesting. Let's move on to number nine. <laughs> Imagine that you're starting a new job at a Swedish company. Yes. At the fika break, you start asking people how much money they make. Everyone suddenly looks away and mutters something about a meeting they forgot. You just made a big mistake. Asking people about their salary is considered a big faux pas in Sweden. Swedish society is rooted in socialism and equality. Things are changing these days, but it's still considered rude to ask people about their salaries. A Swede will happily tell you about their divorce or their mental illnesses, but how much they make, that's a secret they'll take to the grave. But what if you start by first telling everyone how much you make? Well, that leads to the next taboo topic. Okay, uh, hold on one second. So you're telling me that you'd rather tell if, if you have mental illness, if you get a divorce or... If you get cheated, you rather say that than what you make? Interesting. I'm sorry. That's very interesting. But let me flip back to that. I think it is so wrong for somebody to want to know how much you make. I, I don't know why. It's here in the U.S. people do it. And, and I'm like, you have the nerve to walk up to me to want to know how much I make at my job? That's none of your business. That's none of your concern. I can't stand people who do that because I'm like, how dare you? Who do you think you are? What are you doing? And I realize a lot of Americans do that. And I think that is just so disrespectful. Like, 
that's that's too much you, you're overstepping your bounds like come on man grow up or some i don't know i i don't like it i really don't like it not <laughs> Boasting is very rude in Sweden. You might be good at something or make a lot of money, but you don't talk about it. Wow. Jantelagen, the law of jante, is a Swedish term for not believing that you're better than anyone else. Love it. The closest English term is the tall poppy syndrome, about cutting the head of any poppy that grows taller than the others. Mm. People might smile and appear impressed if you boast about something, but don't be surprised if you're never invited back again to a party with that crowd. They won't tell it to your face, but you've just become a boasting pariah that people want to avoid. See, I love that. I, I am on board with that 100%. Do not boast. Nobody really wants to know what you have, how you get it, um, where... Yeah, I can understand that you feel accomplished with stuff, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to the boasting thing... Nah, uh, it's a no-go. I can understand why they said don't do it too. I wouldn't want to be around you either. And I like that slogan or that statement that you have when it comes to boasting. Here in America, you can wipe that off the table. People brag about every doggone thing from their house to their car to their baby to their to the, even the air that they breathe. This <laughs> it is something it, it's it's the norm here but i love that and i'm on board with that 100 percent let's move on to number two. the next thing not to do is pretty simple don't assume that all of scandinavia is the same Norwegians and Swedes are different. Danes and Swedes are different. And Finnish people aren't even Scandinavian. They're part of the Nordics. Each country has their own customs, their own language, and their own set of values. Danish people are all drunk and lazy, for example. And Finnish people are depressed and speak monosyllabically. And Norwegians just live off their oil money and wander around in the mountains. They don't do anything useful. So the next time you're thinking of saying that Sweden is similar to Denmark, then you're implying that we are drunk and lazy as well. No, but seriously, we see the differences in our cultures very, very clearly, even if you might not. I'm sorry. <laughs> the way he put it, he said it, not me. <laughs> the way he put it, I'm like, geez, that's a little harsh. But guess what? I love it. You know why? Like he said, we see the difference in culture. Do not bundle us up to all be the same. And it makes sense. Different cultural background, different way of doing things, different norms, different. So Scandinavians, they're not all the same. Do not put them all in one basket. Pretty much. That's what he's saying. And I'm on board with that. Let's continue. <laughs> Have you ever been on an escalator in Sweden and noticed that you have a line of people behind you sighing in frustration and looking annoyed? Chances are you've been standing on the left side of the escalator. Never stand on the left side. The left side is for walking and the right side is for standing still. This is mostly a problem in bigger cities like Stockholm. I don't even know if they have escalators in smaller towns. If you stand on the left side, no one will shout at you because Swedes dislike confrontation. But if looks could kill, you'd be stabbed more times than Julius Caesar. Here's a simple little rhyme to help you remember where to stand. Stand on the right, now that's all right. Stand on the left and you're a stupid bastard. <laughs> Hold on, I did not know that you guys are on board with standing on the right when riding an escalator because i realize it's a thing for uk so i guess it's the same in sweden but it kind of makes sense that just stand on one side if so if somebody wants to go by and let them go by and he said I, and i like what he said that you guys don't like confrontation so you won't necessarily say anything to anyone you'll just stare them down and i'm on board with that but 
I know, I know, don't do that. All right, let's continue on to number five. Things not to do in school. Number five. In the U.S., it's common to call politicians religious and God-worshipping and God-fearing, and that's intended to be a good thing. If a politician in Sweden were to call themselves God-fearing, there would be quite a few raised eyebrows. Oh. Religion isn't very big in Sweden. Many people have some sort of faith, though, and we do like churches. They're big and cool, and they look absolutely awesome. But you don't really go there to worship God. That's where you listen to choirs and concerts instead. Most people in Sweden are atheist or at least agnostic, and it's seen as a bit of an odd thing to start to talk about your faith. The best way to ensure that you're never invited to any of the cool midsummer parties is to say that you're deeply religious. If you have to say anything, just say that you're spiritual. That's much more accepted. Oh, okay. That's one I did not know. So that's good to know. So you're not religious. And it's interesting when he said, oh, our church is not to go hang out. It's to do concerts and listen to choir. It's not to actually attend church service. I was like, huh? What? So avoid all religious talk, period, point blank. That's basically what he's saying. Got it. Let's move on to the next one. All right? Do you speak like this most of the time? Then you're not really going to fit in in Sweden. Oh. Swedish people are pretty quiet, and we appreciate people speaking softly if they have to speak at all. Also, having your phone on speaker mode is just completely unacceptable anywhere. Just forget about that feature completely when you go to Sweden. Use your headphones like everyone else. However, Swedish people aren't always quiet. When a Swede is drunk, they will be as loud and obnoxious <laughs> as humanly possible. I'm not saying that we Swedes are like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I'm not saying that we aren't. So, speak softly. Got it. So, you only get loud when you're drunk. So, speak quietly. Got it. So, you guys are very soft-spoken. I like that. And you only get loud when you're drunk or maybe at a sporting event. That's understandable. That's acceptable. I get it. I'm, I'm like... I'm learning so much about the people from Sweden. It's not even funny. And you guys, you better have your headphones on if you're going to use your speaker. Don't use speaker on a whole. Huh. Americans are known for that. They on FaceTime. They're not even looking at the screen, but the phone is blaring. They're talking to somebody on the phone and it's on speaker. I could never understand that. And I always try to say, that don't make no sense. Why are you on speaker? Not everybody want to hear your conversation. This is so annoying, very annoying here. And I, and I don't understand why people are comfortable that way here. It's crazy. Do you enjoy a bit of personal space? Maybe a couple of decimeters or so. Well, Swedish people need at least a couple of meters at all times. During that. COVID, everyone had to stand two meters apart, but no one really noticed the difference in Sweden. Don't sit next to someone on the subway if there's an empty seat anywhere else in the car, and don't stand too close when standing in line. Otherwise, you'll make us poor Swedes extremely uncomfortable, ah. and you'll come off as some sort of sociopath, or possibly American. And whatever you do, don't start talking to people when standing that close. That's just plain weird. I tell you guys, your customs and real life is so different. Like I'm like, no, your personal space. No, personal bubble. I'm on board with that. I'm so on board with that. Because I can see it as he's showing people in the queue. I'm like... There's much space between them. They're not hitched up on the back of somebody else. And I'm like, oh, you, you understand? I'm not, I don't have to, you don't have to be grabbing over, looking over your shoulder. 
Because, and he said, even within that time when the, yeah, it didn't seem strange to anybody to stay away from people because that's just who you are. That's just, that's, that is how it's supposed to be. Back up off of me, man. <laughs> personal space, personal bubble. Come on. And he said something else. He said, don't, don't just walk up and talk to me. Okay, we're going to be in problem. Because Americans, that's all they do. They just see and they just talk to you. Oh, like it's, uh, like, yeah. And don't just sit next to a person. Guys, I'm telling you. It's pretty cool, though. Next is a short but sweet one. Don't talk about the Finnish hockey team. Huh? Yes, the Finnish are pretty good at hockey. You don't have to rub it in. Sweden has been neutral for a long time, and we haven't been at war for ages. But the hockey matches between Finland and Sweden are as close as we get. Are you serious? Like, seriously, do not talk about a Finland hockey team? You, th you guys, that's serious. Do you guys not like each other? Let me know in the comment section. Okay now. All right. There's one thing that makes Swedish people furious more than anything else. It's not murder. People die sometimes. It happens. It's not talking crap about Sweden. We do that ourselves anyway all the time. The worst thing you can do in Sweden is to cut in line. Standing in line is holy in Sweden. You must respect the queue and you cannot try to cut in line. Granted, this is a bit of an extreme example. This is a line to get into Comic-Con Stockholm, but the principle still stands. Do you remember the law of Janta I mentioned earlier? Basically, don't believe that you're special and that you deserve to move ahead of others in the queue. It's all about fairness. Everyone hates standing in line, but everyone has to share the pain and no one gets special treatment. And there you have it. Cutting in line is probably the worst thing you can do in Sweden. And that ends my list of the top things not to do if you visit Sweden. I hope you found it useful or at least Thank interesting. You. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. You do. Now to show what a hypocrite I am, I am going to try to cut in line because <laughs> I have a press pass. That is funny. <laughs> so don't cut the line. You guys get furious. You guys get mad about that. Isn't that something? But I'm like, you got to respect it. You see a line, you join the line. Don't try to feel as if you're better than anybody or, or you're more important. Join the line like anybody else. I'm waiting. You can wait. We are we, we are breathing the same here. Go in the line. I'm on board with that. But he's serious. He's like, listen, we take that to another level. Do not cut the line. Join the queue. Okay? Final. <laughs> I like it. So now I know 10 things that I should not do when I visit Sweden. All right? I get it. So don't talk about Finland um, team. Do not talk about it. Keep your lips seal do not cut the line do not talk loud don't put your phone on speaker don't just talk to anybody on the bus don't and i repeat don't stand on the left side of the escalator do not ask nobody about them salary do not ask anybody i'm like that's a lot but i am in agreement with them you know why because it makes sense personal space because like i said he's showing the line and the gap between each person standing i'm like even walking you can see that no one is hitched up on each other that's pretty cool i like that i like that and don't just go talk up to anybody anybody want to talk to you <laughs> and do not boast wow i like it i like it you guys are different i see that it's your island girl and i'm running out of here don't forget like i said to go over and show him some love the link will be in the description below don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up let me know in the comment section what you'd like me to check out next because it will be done i'm loving this sweden i'm coming uh-huh <laughs>
be good be kind love each other be safe and i'll definitely catch you guys in another video bye